I'm willing to risk it all. I really want to be a light in a completely different way. For the sake of obedience. I want to be bold in my gift. Bold in my purpose. Bold in my faith. I love y'all. Even I if love I look crazy. So much. It's cool. <laughs> what's up only for purpose we are back with another video but as you can see it is saturday so it is episode two let's talk purpose Woo! <laughs> i really need to learn how to do a sound effect because that up but anyways y'all so last week or two weeks ago we talked about purpose what is purpose what is only for purpose and getting aligned with our purpose. This week is gonna be pretty simple. We're just gonna be talking about how do you know that you're in purpose. And we're gonna talk about, of course, who displayed that in the Bible. Although there were so many people who did such thing, it was placed on my heart that we're gonna talk about Joseph. Joseph, 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 the handsome young man who his brothers hated. We are gonna talk about him and how, how all the events that he went through led up to him being in purpose like he, we're gonna go up until his aha moment because this story literally varies from about genesis 37 to 50 but we're not gonna go all the way through there i actually just picked out a few things out of 37 39 40 41 and 42 so if you see me keep looking down it's because i got my bible right here and i got my notes right here but overall we're gonna talk about joseph so i'm just gonna jump right into it because <clears throat> that's when we'll all be on the same page that way I could talk about his aha moment. So in 37, this is when we get introduced to Joseph from Jacob. Jacob, Joseph was Jacob's youngest son, so he adored him very much. Therefore, his father loved him more than his other children and his brothers hated him, meaning like they were jealous of him because just because of his father's love, because you know, you know how it is being the youngest baby, especially at a, a old ripen age. Like I can honestly relate to Joseph, not saying my sisters hate me or anything, but as far as the part where it's being a baby, like literally you are the, the last baby. My parents were older when they had me and I was the baby. My sisters loved me. What I'm saying is, like, I can feel, I can understand the love for them. Not saying, I'm not saying my parents love my me more than my sisters, but just something about having that last baby, especially at being at an older age. Like, I can relate to Joseph in that. So, yeah, they hated him because of his love and everything. And not all, not all, not only, excuse me, <laughs> did they hate him because of his father's love for him. They hated him because Joseph was having dreams. Like, Joseph had a dream that, um. I'm gonna show y'all in verse five. Verse five, it tells us Joseph, one night Joseph had a dream and when he told his brothers about it, they hated him more than ever. Listen to this dream, he said. We were out in the field tying up bundles of grain. Suddenly my bundle stood up and your bundles all gathered around and bowed low before me, <laughs> before mine. So y'all know when God sends us dreams, they're kind of in like, they're not ever literal in what they're saying. It's in such a, it's like him speaking in parables. Like it's just, a earthly meaning, a earthly presentation with the earthly meaning, I mean, a heavenly meaning. So that's what happened. So basically it was saying that his brothers are gonna, are gonna bow before him. Like they're gonna be able, they're gonna end up being servants to Joseph. So they're in their head like, listen, you already the youngest brother. You already handsome. My father already loves you more than he loves me. And now you're telling me that I'm gonna serve you? Mm -mm. that's where I draw the line so that's what happened and as that one day his um, father told him to like go so shortly after this Jacob jo I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep getting these J's mixed up mixed up so Joseph went after his brothers because his brothers were pasturing to their father's flock which is in Shechem and so they had been gone for a while so Jacob was like Joseph your brothers are pasturing the sheep at Shechem get ready and I will send you to them and Joseph was like, I'm ready to go. So he ended up meeting them there or whatever. And he got sold into slavery, y'all. Like, show us that. And that's why I said I don't want to get really into deep to everything because the way that this story varies, it goes all the way until chapter 50. So I advise y'all to read it, but I'm just going to do like little pinpoints and I'm going to keep it moving. So when he met them, they ended. he ended up... Um, selling him into slavery they took his robe from him and they dipped it in like a uh, animal's blood or something and they brought it back to his father so now they got his father thinking that he's dead like so trifling anyways 
Moving on to verse, we, I skipped verse 30, not verse 30, chapter 38, and I moved on to 39. This is when Potiphar actually, he was a Egyptian officer. This is when Potiphar actually purchases Joseph because he's like, I see the favor of God on you. So I can see you on my team. I can see you, you know, helping me out, you know, and I help you out. You help me out. It's an exchange. It's a win-win. That's what was going on. In verse 2, he tells us that because he says the Lord was with Joseph and he succeeded in everything. So Potiphar noticed that and he placed him as the, and he was pleased. So he placed him as the personal assistant. Like, that's how you know the favor of God is on you because the opportunities, the doors that are going to open. Like, you know, what the enemy meant for evil, God meant it for good. Like, my brother tried to sell me into slavery. Now look at me. Look at me. I'm a personal assistant. So... That was good. Joseph basically was in the house. Like he was real close in the house. He was personal assistant. So you can only imagine the things that he was doing that people don't want to do. <laughs> so that's why they hired personal assistants. And so just because of that, for Joseph's sake, the Lord was with Joseph in that as well. Like he favored him real bad. He blessed um, Pharaoh's household and everything that he had just so he can look good. You see what the favor of God can do? And you see what being connected to anointed people can do? Like blessings literally it matters in, in this walk of your purpose it matters who you are connected to we cannot afford to just be still hanging out with people who want to be in this world because how are you going to fight for me spiritually you know i'm going through spiritual warfare and i can't call you because you <clears throat> asking me i got a headache and, I, and you asking me i take some medicine no baby i need you to pray for me <laughs> I need you to pray for me. I need you to come and agree me. I need you. I need you to intercede on my behalf. So it matters who the favor, not the favor, who not who the favor of the Lord is on. But you never know who you connected to. I'm sorry, y'all. This lot is just <laughs> bothering me. You never know who be who you're being connected to can help you on your path to purpose. It's known to say it's known to be said in verse in not in verse chapter thirty nine that Je Je <laughs> I didn't pray. That's why, y'all. I just jump into it. I just jump into it on my own thing. I didn't pray. So let's pray. Sorry. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for today, Lord God. I want to thank you for the day that you have made, Father God. I am sorry for not inviting you into my presence right now, Lord God. But I already know when you said two or more, God, you are definitely in the presence. But just for some more reassurance, God, I just want to acknowledge your presence. And I just want to thank you for being here in this moment, Lord God, on episode two of Let's Talk Purpose, Lord God. So everything that you have given me, Lord God, I pray that I can just say it the way that you have given me, Lord God. I pray that you would be in the midst of this episode, Lord God. And I just pray that you will help me deliver the message, Lord God. And I just pray that this message will reach exactly who it needs to reach, Lord God, that they can be helped and that they can be moved into purpose, Lord God. So God, again, I'm sorry, God, for not acknowledging your presence right now, Lord God, and thinking that I can do it in my strength, Lord God. I cannot do it in my strength, Lord God. So I just pray for your strength to come meet me right where I am in this very moment in Jesus name Lord God so I thank you I honor you I give you all the praise and all the glory and it is in Jesus name I pray amen okay y'all so please forgive me for not praying like what was I thinking you know what it was I'm gonna be honest real quick I, I'm sorry y'all I know I'm getting off track but I woke up God woke me up at six o'clock y'all I read my bible then I started scrolling and then I started um I don't know what else I did. Oh, I think I was finishing. I finished my book last night. I don't know. I was, after I read my Bible, I was doing unnecessary stuff. And then I knew that I should have just got up and recorded this video. But I said, no, sleep sounds better. So here we are. Here we are. And I got to go to work soon. But it's okay because I'm still going to get this message because gotta give myself grace but girl you knew better so you should have did better anyways moving on where are we so we were talking about how Jan joseph was well built and handsome that's how everybody viewed him as well built and handsome he can interpret dreams you know he's new to this town he's very favored the lord the lord's favor is upon him like you know so all eyes is on him you got all these qualities and you got the lord with you all eyes are on him so because of that Potiphar's wife pressured Joseph to sleep with her. She was real trifling. Like she kept on 
tempting poor old Joseph. And Joseph is like, no, like I, Potiphar gave me all that I needed and he trusts me. And you want me to sit here and sleep with you and mess all that up? Like it's not worth it. That's a good man, Savannah. That's a good man. Like her on the other hand was just trifling. So she kept on, he kept on trying to um just stay out of her way by any means necessary. Like literally just stay out of her way. He went into work and there was no one else around. And then here she come grabbing him by his cloak and demanding that he would sleep with her. And so he ran, he got up out of there. He said, no, ma'am, I told you, I got all of this and it's worth than just sleeping with you. And you're someone else's wife at that. So no, but as he ran out of there, he left his cloak in her hand, in her hand. So here she go screaming talking about some help help and then gonna say that he raped her and then she had the cloak in her hand so she thought that was proof she said let me show you what you said look my husband has brought this hebrew slave here to make fools of us he came into my room to rape me but i screamed when he heard me scream he ran outside and got away but he left his cloak behind with me like girl let's be real Let's be real. I ain't even gonna say what my mom want me to say right now. But let's be real. So, after that, she told her husband, which is Potiphar, and he was furious. He was like, he felt, he felt the same way. He felt how he knew, I gave you all this. And you know, you treated my wife like that? You raped my wife? Bet. He threw him into prison, y'all. He threw him into prison. And this right here, I'm going to show y'all again. What the enemy meant for evil, God meant it for good. So now I'm going to show y'all how God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love them. So now we're at the part in chapter 40 where Joseph is in prison. So the crazy thing about this is he's in prison with a cupbearer and a baker. And the baker and the cupbearer ended up having dreams that they couldn't interpret. We're in prison, we're having dreams, we can't interpret them. Oh, look, Joseph here, baby, the dream interpreter. The one with the gift is here to interpret our dreams. So, and I love how he said this because he said in verse eight, he said, interpreting dreams is God's business. Like he was humble, he took no credit for his gift and he trusted that God was gonna do what he said he was gonna do so i love that so he ended up interpreting the dreams um for joseph not for joseph for the cupbearer and for the baker and then after all that joseph asked them he asked the cupbearer to mention him so that he can get out mention him to pharaoh so that he may that he may get out so it's like although he was in here he knew that he was wrongfully accused and he was still he he wanted to get out and that, ooh, that just hit me. Ooh, hallelujah, y'all. That just hit me. That literally just hit me because I had a dream about my workplace. And although I didn't want to be there, I knew I had purpose there. So it's like, I'm still looking for other means and opportunities and open doors to get out of here. But I know this is where God has me right now. And I know that there is purpose in me being here right now. Come on, Joseph. I didn't get this revelation at first. But I thank you. So, yeah. So, to fast forward, Pharaoh's cupbearer cut forgot to forgot to mention Joseph after the dreams had come to pass. Like, literally, everything that um Pharaoh said that his dream meant, it ended up coming to pass. And when it was time for him to go mention him to Pharaoh, he totally forgot all about that. He forgot about, he forgot about Joseph and everything. He forgot that he was ever supposed to mention him. And mine just went blank. <laughs> so moving on to chapter 41 <clears throat> pharaoh <laughs> two years later pharaoh that's why <laughs> if had he had mentioned him he could have kept note of him you know he could have kept note of him <sighs> but it's okay because every y'all i'm sorry just stay with me everything just be coming together like this man tried to go to the magicians and everything to have them interpret his dreams you know what like you going you trying to go to somebody who don't even know why you having these dreams like i'm the one who sent these dreams i'm the only one who could tell you what they mean but it's okay so 
Yeah. <clears throat> Pharaoh was disturbed by his dreams and magicians couldn't tell him. So the cupbearer finally spoke up because he had a thought. He said, oh, Joseph. That's why Joseph told me to mention him, you know, because the cupbearer was selfish. He was just thinking about himself. He was just thinking about himself. And now it came back to him. He's like, oh, snap. When you threw me into prison, I had we me and me and the baker had dreams, too. And we couldn't figure it out. But it was this man named Joseph. Oh, and that's why God says, like, your name is being mentioned in, um, in rooms that you haven't even stepped in. Like, your gift is powerful. That is your gift. Your gift is going to make room for you. Come on, God. I love that. <clears throat> so, after that, after he mentioned Joseph, they sent for Joseph. To, and he said, God can tell you. So, he did. Like, he, I love that. Like, after all of this, he gave God the credit. Like, God can tell you. I can't tell you, but God can tell you. So, Joseph was put in charge. After all this, Pharaoh said, hold on. You got the favor of God on you, baby. I want you on my team. So, Joseph was put in charge by the entire land of Egypt. So, look. <clears throat> rewind. Let's rewind real quick. Let's rewind. Because who was Potiphar? Potiphar was an Egyptian officer. He was captain of the guard for Pharaoh the king of egypt so you mean to tell me i'm higher than i'm higher than potiphar now i'm higher than potiphar the one whose wife wrongfully accused me and put me in prison for two years everything is working together for my good <laughs> this is why we cannot question what but Joseph didn't question that at all. But this is why we can't question what we go through. Because, baby, God knows. He knows better than we know. So all we need to do is thank him. Like, this whole time, Joseph didn't even shed no tear, man. Like, he just like, man, this has been happening since I was a kid. These folks just been hating on me. These folks just never had my best interest. Like, that's, <clears throat> that's how Joseph felt. I love Joseph. I could feel Joseph. Like, that's crazy. But yeah. So after that, he was put in he was put in charge by the entire land of Egypt. Like, can you even understand? Can you even begin to think how Potiphar and his wife must feel? Like, girl, and Karma, come on now. The the vengeance of the Lord, that's his. Vengeance of the Lord. Don't fight back. Pray for your enemies. Like, I can only imagine, like, bro, it did not once, men once mention that Joseph was sad or that he was, you know, he just took it like a G. Everything thrown at him. He said, I bet. And that just goes with knowing who you serve as well. So moving on. They gave him a new name. The new name was Zappa Nathan Pina. Zappa Nathan Pina. And they gave him a wife. They gave him some fine clothes and a gold chain. Let me find out Joseph was a hint of fine me. Even though they already said it, but listen. They cleaned him up for real. They changed his name. They gave him a wife. And that's... <sighs> Y'all, I didn't get these revelations when I was studying at first. But just walking with God, like... It don't matter what you've been through, baby. It don't matter who... Did what to you? It don't matter who spoke wrong against you, cause when the when the favor of the Lord is on God, on when the favor of the Lord is on you, what what door what what door is God open? No man can close in Jesus' name, and then He's gonna repay or pay you seven fold from what the enemy stole. So it gets better, y'all. It really gets better. He got a new name. He got a wife. He got some fine clothes and he got a gold chain and he is in charge of the entire land of Egypt. Like people got to come to him. They ain't even going to Pharaoh. They coming to him first. <laughs> of course, it's going to get approved by Pharaoh because that's just the respect that Joseph had. He said, if it don't get your approval, then it's not going to happen. Like I'm going to still come to you first, although you put me in charge. Okay. So that's just, 
Joseph. He was a respectful man. We need more men like Joseph who can endure. <laughs> Let me shut up. But yeah, so 30 years, he was, Joseph was 30 years old and he was serving in the court of Pharaoh. He had two sons and he gathered all crops as predicted in verse 50 through 51. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> verse 50. During this time, before the first of the famine years, two sons were born to Joseph and his wife, Asenath, the son, the daughter of Potiphar, oh, the priest of On. Joseph named his older son Manasseh, for he had made for he, I never know if I'm saying these words right. For he said, God has made me forget all my troubles and everyone in my father's family. And then verse 52 says, Joseph named his second son Ephraim, where he said, God has made me fruitful in this land of my grief. So obviously, Joseph is okay. He got repaid with the enemy meant for evil. God meant it for good. And he was with him the whole time. So he knows how you feel. Walking and trying to find your purpose is not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it. And to know that God is with you wherever you go, it's so comforting. It's so comforting. Like, thank you, God, for being with me. Y'all, the enemy is on me bad in this video. And I just want to say, move. You have no authority. Like, leave me alone. Like, when I tell y'all, <laughs> he like, girl, that bad job. Let's get out. But it's okay, because stop trying to stop me in this video, because I know this video is good. Like, I choked on water, y'all. I keep stuttering on my words. I want to delete this video and start over. But we're going to push through, because purpose, baby. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 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 Same way Joseph had to go through it. We're going to go through it. It's guaranteed. When you sign up to walk with God, you sign a contract, baby, for long suffering. The enemy is going to be after you. But as long as you know that you are a child of God and that you have authority, you walk in that authority. So, any distractions, anything that's causing my mind confusion, anything that's causing me chaos, anything that doesn't want me to succeed right now, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Okay? So, we're going to stand firm, we're going to stand flat, and we're going to focus on this video. Period. Anyways, moving on to uh, 42. I think that's where I was. Yeah, we talked about his sons. We talked about the meaning of his son's name. We talked about how he got repaid for everything that his brothers, his haters put him through. And they set him up, y'all. So we be so upset at our haters. We be trying to call them out. We be trying to focus on them. But really, they be setting us up for success. They be the main ones making your views go up. So don't even hate on them. Just keep pushing, keep being you, and keep giving them something to watch, baby. Because the favor of the Lord is on you. So he's going to be with you wherever you go. In Jesus' name. So moving on to 42. This is when we find out that Joseph... um. Is walking in purpose. Joseph realizes that, hey, I'm walking in purpose, baby. So Joseph's brothers go to Egypt because in the dream, or as it's been prophesied, that a famine was going to hit. It was going to hit all over. It was going to hit. And everybody was going to have to come to Joseph to buy crops, basically. So that's what had happened. And Joseph's brothers ended up going to Egypt to buy crops. This story here, I low-key want to read the whole thing. But I'm going to just summarize it because it is really long. But, but just know that um, when his brothers came to Egypt to buy grain from Egypt, they bowed before him, y'all. They ended up bowing before this man. Okay, I'm going to just read one through nine so we can understand, so we can be on the same page. But that's what I want. All right, so starting at one, it tells us when Jacob heard that grain was available in Egypt, he said to his sons, why are you standing around looking at one another? I have heard there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy enough grain to keep us alive. Otherwise, we'll die. Verse 3. So Joseph sent older brothers, went down to Egypt to buy grain. Ten older brothers. But Jacob wouldn't let Joseph's younger brother, Benjamin, go with them. So here, obviously, <clears throat> after Joseph... His father must have been, like, really sad because they ended up having another child after Joseph when Joseph was the youngest. But then his brothers told his father that he died, like, he got ate by a wild animal. So, 
they tried to have another son. So, and here Jacob's like, no, I'm not going for that again. So he wouldn't let Joseph's younger brother, Benjamin, go with them for some fear, for some, for fear some harm might come to him. So Jacob's sons arrived in Egypt along with others to buy food, for the family was in Canaan as well. <clears throat> Since Joseph was governor of all Egypt and in charge of selling grain to all the people, it was to him that his brothers came. When they arrived, they bowed before him with their faces to the ground. Joseph recognized his brothers instantly, but he pretended to be a stranger and spoke harshly to them. Where are you from? He demanded. From the land of Canaan, they replied. We have come to buy food. Although Joseph recognized his brothers, they didn't recognize him. And he remembered the dreams he had about them many years before. He said to them, you are spies. You have come to see how vulnerable our land has become. So that right there is when he realized that, okay, baby, I'm in purpose. Cause I didn't know, I thought I was just having dreams back then, but now I remember you just bowed before me. You didn't even know who I was, but this is the first time that you have bowed before me. You have bowed before me just like those dreams I said and you thought I was tripping you thought I was trying to be better than you when really I was just telling you that this is what God has shown me so y'all they didn't recognize Joseph but Joseph recognized them and it gets it gets so much better it gets so much better and I'm just saying that the end of this of verse 42 it, tell, it just ends up saying how Joseph returned their money and gave them grain like although he spoke harshly to them he took care of them and then to move on to the story I don't know if I should tell y'all, but it does get better, obviously. It does get better. I wanted to stop there because that's where purpose was shown. Like, that's when Joseph knew that he was walking in purpose, when the dream that God has given him has came to pass, literally. And, of course, all through 37, up until 42, it tells us how he was just kept on getting set up for success. Like, what the enemy meant for evil, God meant it for good. And everything was just coming together, and it was just working together because Joseph loved God, and he gave all credit to God. He gave all glory to God, and he trusted in his father no matter what he had went through. So, that's beautiful. <clears throat> I guess we could say, <clears throat> how do you know when you're walking into your purpose is when things start clicking and things start making sense when you start getting set up, when you start realizing that the favor of God is on you, when you figure out that you're helping people, when you figure out that people can see your anointing on you, like that's when you'll know that you're working, walking into purpose and you're doing something that you actually enjoy. Like, you know, like I always said, I feel like your passion, cause it's a difference between passion and purpose, but I feel like your purpose has something to do with what you're passionate about. Like for instance, writing i love to write i love to just speak and be motivational and here i am now like i do not despise these humble beginnings because god knows what he's doing just like with david when david was tending to the sheep when david was um david was doing so much things that was just preparing him that he didn't even know and then also one thing another thing about david is he had he was I guess we can use the, the jack of many trades. Like, he was more than one thing. Like, he was a lot. Like, he had to tend to sheep before he became king. Like, he didn't he didn't despise those humble beginnings because that just made him who he was. Like, you know, you never know as king who he was teaching how to be a, um, how to tend to sheep. So, it's just like, do not despise where you are and trust that guy is, he working with you, baby. Like, he's not going to let you get too off, far off track, especially while walking with him. I can see if you in this world, then okay. Oh, some things ain't gonna add up, but God gonna come in and He gonna shake everything up. Like even when I was being, when I was an entrepreneur, I still am an entrepreneur. I'm gonna claim that over myself. But even when I had my business up and running, it wasn't built on a solid foundation from God. But I'm not saying that that's not what He didn't have for me. But He said, "Come on, give this to me. I'm gonna sit on it for a few years. I'm gonna build you up, and then I'm gonna give it back to you." Like God's no is not always no. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's just strictly no. But don't despise that no. Like, you never know what exactly he is setting you up for, what greatness he has for you. So I don't know where you are today, but if you are walking with God, trust in him. Because Psalms 37 and 23 says he directs the steps of the godly and he delights in every detail of your life. Isn't it? Not this man. Our father delights. Like, he do. Do you know what it means to delight? Like, he wants to. He is very in tune. He is very intimate in every detail of your life meaning you are not alone he is with you wherever you go so baby you're walking in purpose you may not realize it right now but you're walking in purpose 
and God is going to put the pieces together and just trust in him and be patient, y'all. And everything that you think you went through, well, I ain't going to discredit that. Everything that you went through, God seen it, God felt it, God ordered it. So just trust in him, surrender, and allow him to just order your steps and be sovereign in your life. Invite him in so that he can reveal what needs to be revealed. It's not an overnight process, y'all, but as long as you submit and you be patient and you trust in the Lord and lean out on your own understanding, everything is going to come together exactly how it needs to be. Just like in Joseph. Like, y'all literally have to read. We stopped at 42, but go up until 50. This story is beautiful. Like, literally, like, God literally repaid Joseph for everything. Sevenfold. And the way, in the way Joseph, that's another thing. Your heart has to be postured right because Joseph's heart posture was correct. Like, although he was in authority, although he had the authority to treat his brothers how they treated him, this man still looked out for them. This man still had God's heart posture, God's love within him. Like, vengeance is the Lord. That's all it is. Like, that's the main thing about Joseph. He knew that, not the one of the main things about Joseph, is he knew that vengeance was the Lord's. Like, he didn't even have to fight back enough about nothing. Whatever God said, went. He was, he was submissive. He was obedient. And he was just, he had faith. He had real faith. So, y'all, like I said, I don't know where y'all at today, but trust God. Trust God. You'll know that you're walking in purpose because things will make sense, but it won't really make sense. And it's just like God will lead you. So, I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all so much, like always. And I really hope y'all enjoyed this. Leave some feedback in the comments. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to talk about on episode three, but of course it's in God's hand. We trust God, don't we? So yeah, I will see y'all in episode three and I pray that y'all have an amazing rest of the day. I love y'all so much. And I pray that the Lord, the Lord's favor will be on you wherever you go. And I just pray that you will be one step closer into finding purpose, walking in purpose in your relationship with God, you know, like, yeah. So yeah, I love y'all. Bye. Even I if love I look crazy. So much. It's cool. <laughs>